thanks for joining it's been uh, one of them days today I haven't had none of the S's for you shave, shower, shampoo nothing I've just about sorted some of the stuff out so there might be a few photos still upside down, inside out and whatever it's been uh, one of those hectic days but that is life, that, that is normal so we'll click on I want to get through these, we've got uh, 300 slides to get through tonight it's been a busy week uh, I've muted everybody because there's quite a bit of fear, interference before we kicked off so anybody speakers that come on well I've got Steve from Brom, he's on first and then um, uh, Jeffrey, Austin uh, obviously before you start off you got to unmute yourselves right let's start off sweet corn I put these in uh, probably two weeks ago now let's make sure that's it all these are ready to be pricked out as you can see uh, individual cups as normal hold them upright and then I fill them up <coughs> So they are standing nice and upright and firmed in. Once they are in, they'll get a good wear drip. And then they'll be in the warm end of the green. Yeah. Yeah. Until they start off. Right, Paul, everyone. On. Somebody's unmuted themselves, are they? It's a volume up. Who's that? It's supposed to be all muted. Right, pot licks need potting on. Next uh, pot size up. So it's like two to three a litre. Anytime when they're on the second potting, I'll put a handful of worm compost, uh, worm cast in as well, just to give them that nice little bit of extra. So it's uh, clover compost and meat vermiculite. Pot goes in a bit lower than what it was before, as you can see there nice roots take the mold out bungie leaking firm it down top it up upright always keep them nice and upright then you'll get the old bends in them nice water in obviously it's outside so, so i don't get all the drainage going into me greenhouse staging it runs off outside obviously got to be a windless and dry day right steve from brum are you with us I hope he is. Steve, are you here? Unmute yourself, mate. Don't look like it. I should have asked before, I suppose. Right, Can you Steve, hear me? Steve. Yeah, he's here, mate. Yeah? Are you ready to go, mate? Can you hear us? Yes. I can hear you. Yeah? Yeah. Get going, yeah, mate. Yeah, okay. All yours. All right. Thank you. I'd uh, just like to start by saying uh, this is just my third Zoom, so uh, I'm still learning. Um, have you got the first shot there, Mick? Yeah, it's up, Art. Can you put the, the, the next one up? The one before? Have you got the one before? This happens every time. I put them in order. And then they come in a uh, call course all about ours. You'll just have to go with it. All right, no problem. Um, well, I'd just like to say, like four years ago, I had no interest in gardening at all. Um, but on the 1st of May 2017, we did this plot over. Uh, you probably see one of the other photos. It's a bit bit overgrown. Um, this is our local uh, allotments. Uh, it's a half plot, which measures 12 foot by 70 foot, uh, and it's run by the parish council. Uh, there's about 100 plots on there, and the cost for two members, which is myself and the wife, uh, for the two members on the plot is 44.50 a year, which is not too bad really. As I say, I was never interested in gardening before, but this sort of changed the way I look at things four years ago. Um, at, the, at the top of the, that photo there, that's our plot. 
at the top, there's the eco toilet, which is just behind um, where we put our greenhouse, which is one of the best things that we did. We, we, we started covering all the, uh, the plot because um, we were working our way down. Started to put raised beds in there. Um, it's an extension of our garden at home, really. Um, we started with the greenhouse and the trellis, which is just put a bit of privacy around our toilet area. Have you got the next one, Mick? Yep. Okay, Steve. All the raised beds we made from green. Okay. Yeah, I've got internet. All the uh, all the beds that we made were from. Um, who's that, me? No, it's my internet playing up. Keep going, Steve. We can hear you. Okay. Can you still hear us? Yeah. 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 I say all the all the raised beds was made from uh, reclaimed wood, which we got from our son's house when he moved in with his wife. Uh, there was a shed, an old shed there, which he took down. So we used all the, all the wood from the old shed uh, to make the raised beds. Um, we bought all the wire from uh, Wilco's at the end of the year. So we got that a little bit cheap. Um, in between each raised bed, we've got the chip bark, which we get dropped at the, um, at the allotments, uh, which we've used uh, to put in the paths. So all the raised beds you can get round, you can walk round all of them. Uh, we put a little fence all the way around just to to let people know that that's your plot and they don't trespass on there because they'd uh, they the thing of walking across your plot if it's not covered. Uh, the first year it was just about all preparation, which was 2017, uh, getting the plot ready for, for what we was going to do the next year, and then our second year. Uh, we were runner-up for the best half plot, which was 2018, which that was in the November. And then November 2019, we actually won first prize for the best half plot. Bro. On our site, there's about 100 plots altogether, which are made up from uh, half plots and also full plots. Uh, our plot and the one next to it used to be a full plot, but the chap left and it was made into two half plots. Um, last year, there's, there was no judging, obviously, because of COVID, and there's been nothing this year so far. Um, but it was just the next thing of our garden. The, the wife loves a garden, so it was mainly flowers. And when we first moved on there, um, people were saying, oh, what are you going to be growing? And we said flowers. And uh, we had comments like, if you can't eat it, don't grow it. But I uh, say so the eco toilets at the top there. We got a parking right next to it, uh, so we do tell people that we've got an allotment plot with an ensuite. <laughs> uh, like some it. of the things that we grow in are dahlias, gladiolas, as you can see there. Um, I started off with about 50 gladys the first year, and it was about 150 last year. Uh, we got strawberries, runner beans. Uh, we had some potatoes in there. We had the French climbers as well. Um, a lot of the plants that we're doing, like the zinnias, uh, the wife does from seeds. We try and do as much from seed as we can. Um, obviously, it keeps the cost down then. Uh, we do some collias and we also like some succulents as well. Um, and that's how our plot looked last year. So it's gone from an overgrown plot to start with. And in three years, we've got it uh, looking how it is now. Nice. Brilliant. So we're really pleased. I said four years ago, I had no interest in going at all. Um, it's just something that sort of changed my life sort of thing. And it's with lockdown last year, it uh, was one of the places that you could actually go up to yeah. and, uh, and enjoy yourself when you had no problem of anybody else being up there, really. So it was a bit of a godsend. That was our picture last year. We got the arch there. The gladiators made some more raised beds with the strawberries. Um, the strawberries I had in there, I've started off with one pack of El Santa, which I got from Lidl the first year, six plants. 
And the end of last year, from the plants I had, I, I took about 48 cuttings, which I give most of them away. Um, we've done Cambridge favourites as well, and Hanoi strawberries, which, uh, which we're really pleased with. That's about it. Is that you, Steve? Yeah, that's me. <laughs> I'm the good-looking one underneath the arch. And I say, that's, that, that was our award for the, uh, for the best, best half plot. We came first. That was a new shield, which we still got. You're well, supposed to have it for 12 months. We've now had it for two years. Just uh, really? any longer, I think we might melt it down. OK. That's how it looked when we first had it. Wow. So uh, I say we was novices, we had no idea at all. Um, and it was only because our son had two composters when he moved into his house and we brought it up to the allotments and asked them if they could use it. Uh, and they said yes. And then they took us around just to show us around. And uh, they said, you know, do, um, do you want to have a go? And we, we said we'd take this one on. And that's how it was. And oh. you saw how it ended up. Good man. And that was from 2017 uh, up till the present date. Well done. Thank you. That's it, Mick. That's part of it there. We had a, that's how we first started putting the frame around, <coughs> putting the base down for the greenhouse. As I say, all this wood was reclaimed from, uh, from our, our lads when he moved into his house. So we had a six foot scarecrow there, which we got um, all the clothes from the, uh, the charity shop. And we put um, an alented marsh mask on. Uh, he didn't give us any help at all. He just stood there with his arms wide open. And people on the plot up the road, they kept on shouting there and they thought it was me. But uh, I said, how many times? I've all been standing there with my arms open. We've got bird feeders on there as well, so it's we've got a little bit there for nature. And the good thing is we can park right next to our plot. So uh, we're really Thank pleased with, that, with the progress that we've made. OK, Mick, thank you. And that's some of the produce we had from the first year, the potatoes and the runner beans. Um, so it's, uh, we're doing a few more things this year. We've got quite a few strawberries in this year, so we've got some raised beds. There's the zinnias. Uh, glad he's in amongst them as well. Brilliant, yeah, Steve. The uh, eco toilet belongs to the site. They OK, Mick? Yeah. Are you retired? Thank you. Now you've got this uh, time on your hands. Uh, well, I, I used to work for Ginsters before, for 28 years. I took early retirement at 55, and I just do two days a week now. Oh, good man. You yeah, any goodies? Uh, <laughs> don't work for Ginsters anymore. You call me yeah. to having a plot. No, I used to. Keep your body and mind active. No, it's... Looking good. Yeah, yeah. Boston. Thank you. Cheers for that then, Steve. Good man. Thanks a lot, Mick. Cheers, Dave. Right, back on me plot. This is the... Thank you. Cheers. These are the spent tops I was drawing out for Gav when he came up. I forgot to bloody pack them up for him. Gav, I'm still here when you want them. Right, Blanche Leaks. These need potting up again. Normal uh, clover mixed with vermiculite. I water two days before, then uh, nothing collapses when you get it down the pot. It holds together. Nice white. Thick roots, that's what I want to see. Put it on nice and upright. Right, these uh, these two chaps. This is my trial. You'll be seeing this all the way through. You're going to get fed up with these. Clover versus my compost. Still bits in mine, but if I'm going to use it, obviously I'm going to take the worms out. So I've just got it from down the plot. Uh, same again, a, a bit lower in, in the cup when I'm uh, potting on the next so pot size up. When they are nice and straight, outside again, give them a good watering. 
in the still in the warm end of the greenhouse. Uh, very soon when they get potted on again, uh, the whole of the greenhouse has to be opened up. And there'll only be heat on when we get a frost. It's slowly filling up. Hound dog, he likes boots and all. Luckily our uh, goat herder, we've got goats, chickens, bloody everything. I have to get rid of the muck. Luckily they've got to that must be at least three or four days now on the trot dishing it, getting rid of their goat muck. Obviously they've got to get rid of it and we're taking it off them. Right, back garden. Quite a few of the, the shrubs and things. All they're having is a, a little bit of cold tea, just for a little bit of a pick-me-up. Nothing too much, just to help them out good along. Egg boxes, if I get anything coloured, I don't use those egg boxes, I don't rip them up. Just in case there's so much in the colour in the ink. Right, who gave us a, a talk <coughs> last week? Jerry on his fruit. So I've got, I've got a good job them. Fish, blood, and bone later on. Right, my first lot of uh, onion sets. Oh, bloody internet. My first lot of onion sets from Wilco. These are ready to go out. So my bottom structure. I've got to open up this side to get, obviously, this side of the raised bed. But uh, the cover's taken off. This had a, a, a good covering last year with the um, rabbit book. It looks a bit dry, but I've only got it down three inches, and it is nice and moist. My lines go in, ready to take the, the sets. All I want in is three lines. These two don't look very well, they ain't, so they're going to get binned. If they look weak, bin them. Right, if you get anything out of a pot and the roots are start going round the bottom, just ease those roots off like that. Because if you do put them in, uh, the chance of that plant, whatever it is, the roots are still going to follow that structure when it's going round. If you just open them up before you put them in, keep the compost as it is, obviously, and then bung them in. I firm them in from around the outside, pushing in towards the onion. I don't push the onion down. I push the soil into the onion itself. Obviously, firm him upright. I'll get me a cane. You see where this, I've marked it with um, a felt pen, so I'll get me distance. Put them all going in. Let me three rows them in. The, the rest of the cover is pulled up to them, so I'm, I'm keeping that uh, nice and uh, active underneath. I still want the bacteria and fungi to work in the soil that is moist. So this lot here, I need to go in my tunnel and get some straw, because any bed that I, I plant out, it then gets top dressed. Because the one disadvantage with raised beds, they dry out quicker. If you top dress them with a straw or any mulch, that will stop them drying out and I use stable manure from heaven. Used to, we'll come back onto that later. I know it was gonna rain that night, so I didn't bother walking. Luckily, indeed, that was right for a change. Netting goes back down. This is just top foxes and cats getting in because if you go back on the top one, you can still see the netting is off the top of the structure just in case we get snow again, which somebody I've seen this afternoon said we might be getting snow next week. I hope they weren't talking about the Midlands. That's why that netting is off. Right, if it needs cutting, get a dry day, I'm gonna cut the lawn again. Calabrese. Right, the first true leaf is coming now. You see the seed leaves, first true leaf is coming. These are twice the size now, what there was. When the sun's out, the hound's out. Just give him a bit of wood to chew. Perfect. Everything started coming through now. These little chaps, I've had to cut back to stop the, the hound eating them. These I'm gonna, well, I was gonna sort out. But, uh, pick up about that one. Spuds, it just shows you how warmer it is getting now. Because if it's that one on the left, 30th of the 12th, that chap was put in. And on the right, 19th of the second. And he's just started coming through the bottom. Obviously, 30th of the 12th, we had some pretty good frost in the cold end of the greenhouse, which for him to get gooing, 
it's going to take him a while. I mean, he's still all right. He's still going to grow. But you can just see as the warmer get, as, as the temperature gets better, like the 19th of the second. Don't forget these are in a cold end of the greenhouse. So it is warming up. And the same with the carrots now. I start getting a bit of meat on it and move on. Alstrom area, <coughs> these need potting on very soon. Look at them roots. See the hyphen roots coming off the main main root. Love it. That is nature. Right, tough ball onions. These need a bit the next uh, length of uh, wire on them. As you can see, they're mangling over a bit. So I'm going for the short one, just six to up to up to nine inch. As we've done there. All you're doing is helping them out, keeping them nice and upright meaning you're not putting too much pressure on the plant itself he can now get growing he hasn't got to look after himself and the most of them if you look on the end of my arrow he's still got the seed head on the third leaf is just coming up he's still got the seed head which means he's still taking nourishment out of the casing once all the grub's gone out of the casing then it'll drop off meaning there's still grub in there outside give him a good watering Right, just under there where my arrow is, I've got Alstrom here in there as well. And I've just started coming through, that's a chap there. So we are getting wet. You don't like brooms either? She, sorry. Right, my bracken, bracken uh, my polytunnel back garden, this is drying off. Once it is dried off, i.e. nice and brown, I put that up and put it in my bag, ready to compost it. And then... Uh, get the next lot to dry off. My spud, we're going to sort him out. My big spud in there. He's ready to go out. What's the point set here? Right, this little chap, which is up on the shelf in the kitchen, because I forgot to water it, I forgot all about it, forgot to water it. And the colour in there, the red, compared to that one, the bigger, because I've watered him, looking after him, this one, because I haven't watered him, the colour is superb. So I've stopped watering that one as well now. So if anybody's got any point setters left, just keep the weight off them. Right, our mate uh, Dan, got to remember the compost and put this on a while back. Now he's emailed me again uh, last week. It says because he, he's had that many people ring up and whatever, he's just for our lot. He's going to keep the the discount going on for us. So if anybody is interested. Have a nose on his side again, and uh, he will help us out. Obviously, put the compost bin 15 on, but uh, he's a good lad. But he extended that for a slot. Jeffrey, you ready, mate? Jeffrey, unmute yourself. Yeah, I'm here, mate. Good man. Get yeah. going. Right, uh, this is just to show uh, the progress of the potato seed. This week, but it is that picture. Uh, this is just to show what I've got in the greenhouse. At the back, you can see the little pots of potato seeds. So today, P2, P3, and P6 have come through. So they're just little, little, little seeds. Yeah. Uh, the mat in front of it, the cells, the three rows of uh, golden burpees beetroots, three rows of ordinary beetroots, which you can just see coming through. Yeah. Then there's a uh, Swiss chard, and the rest I've potted up with lupins. And on the right hand side, you can see tomatoes, which should be early tomatoes, but in the greenhouse, no, they're uh, behind everything I've got at home. Next one, please. Nick. These, These photos might be potatoes. arse about facing all Jeffrey. I don't mind. Good man. Uh, these are early potatoes called uh, Artemis, which are a chipping potato. They're flowery. I put these in, like Mix just said, uh, with his potato. I put them in in December. I didn't get any movement till last week. So this is last week. And now they're about the height of the bucket. So uh -huh. I've topped them up with soil. But I didn't want to top it up completely, so I did half, and they're poking through again already. Yeah, mate. These are the peppers, uh, the chilies. 
but because my my windowsill was not hot enough, I cut up a five liter uh, bottle of water and made like a little door inside so I could put these inside so they were hotter. Yeah. And it kind of worked because I had to put them on this week and they're doing great. Brilliant. This is my, let's call it cabbage cage. It's just uh, like a hoop house. On the bottom is uh, lots of muck. Then no digging for a year. So I put that uh, muck down there in October. I left it, put straw on top of it. And now I put out the first cauliflowers under the bottles, as you can see. Yeah. This week I lifted off the bottles and put in a greyhound cabbage, six of them, and five broccoli also in there. So without the bottles anymore. I think you'll be able to see in another picture, I'm not sure. Though. Yep. These are overwintering cabbage. They're called snowball. You sow them in June. You plant them out in September. You leave them over winter uncovered. I just covered it with the nets for the pigeons. You leave them and they're looking like this now. And I should get first cauliflowers uh, first of April. But I think with the weather we've had, the cold weather is going to be about a month later. So I'm thinking about May, May time. Yeah. Yep. So these are just the bottles being taken out of the of the cage for the first uh, cauliflowers that I put in. These are uh, Alsmeer. Is a uh, one that can stand the cold pretty much. So these should be aiming for cropping in June, July. That's the same cabbage again, the overwintering one. Yep. These are my onions. Uh, they're from seed. They're big feature champions. And I love these because they store very, very well. You don't nearly get any rottens in there. They've got a thick, dark brown skin. And I just love them. And I sowed them this year uh, in cells. Normally I do one at a time in little cells. But when I looked at uh, Charles Dowding, he said, put four or five seeds in each cell and put them out like this. So they're still inside. I put them outside for a few days now and I should be planting these in clumps like them uh, this week. Oh, bro. And under there you could see the leaks. They were below zero cold. This is where I put in my carrots. So I covered it with the plastic, but to stop it, uh, I to stop it blowing away i just put the net on there because that net is kind of heavy so it works pretty much up to now that's a uh, spinach i saw and one two three from are coming out but now there's it's a week nearly now and they're nearly all out so i will be planting that in i think about two weeks time they'll go outside like a first crop in every bed before I put in the rest. This is inside the polytunnel, a uh, cold polytunnel. Uh, that's the middle of the row in buckets of strawberries, but they're pretty well advanced now. It's a week and the week makes a lot of difference in there. Yeah. The peas now come up to the wooden slats and they should be starting to make little flowers, I hope, uh, over the next two weeks. And I'm, the hope is that I can get a crop of peas before I plant my tomatoes because they're running up my tomato canes, the coil plants. So it's kind of a first crop and the tomatoes are the second crop. Jeffrey. Yeah. yeah. Are the peas going to block out the light to the strawberries? Well, they shouldn't because the peas, they kind of, I tie them all together in like one column really tightly. So they don't flop around. So there should be about 20 centimeters, about uh, 10 inches between them. So okay. the light should be able to get through. I hope. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, this is the cage again. So I can put uh, seven plants in a row and then uh, five across. So I put in, those are the collies. Now I've got greyhound in there and the calibris at the back, the broccoli. But I left the back row empty, so I can put in there uh, seven, should be, uh, 
what's it called? Sprouting early sprouting broccoli for next year. So I'll be uh -huh. sowing them. I'll be sowing them in May, and at the back, put them at the back so they get less wind. And the first row, on the other side, should be the sprouts so I can get them easily uh, in the winter time. Yep. Next, please. Come on, make. It's moved. Uh, these are the cabbages that went out. <laughs> On the the left, you can see dahlia seeds. Uh, they sprouted. They're coming on nicely, but because it was still too cold, I think it was too cold, or I watered with too cold water. I don't know, but half of them just went boink. So I've got about eight or nine left of them. So I have to re-sow them. And these are the cabbages, but they're pretty much advanced now that I put out. These are uh, the broccoli. And on the other side, you'll see the greyhound cabbages. I popped them out uh, this week. Yep. See on the right hand side. Oh, no, that's the broccoli. On the left hand side would have been the, the greyhounds. So that's time. I just get them from the Aldi or the little in little pots and I always get them at about uh, autumn time put them in the greenhouse let them go through a cold cycle but I don't put them outside because it's too wet and now I put them on into large tubs from Aldi or Lidl where they put the flowers in the high ones so I can water them but the water doesn't touch the roots for long it's like a dry place but it's okay and then there's uh, tomatoes there one chili so you can see the difference in one chili, the right at the back in the white cups. Yeah. There are still tomatoes, but they're not going good. And the lettuce from there has already been planted out between uh, the peas now. That's just the same thing again to show what I put down before I uh, plant out the cauliflowers in it. A straw on top and yeah. underneath is wood chip. And this is what I told you about, about the rats we get. No, well, we think they're voles. So they eat every every uh, bulb we put in, they eat it. So to prevent it, I made these. They're just narcissi, daffodils, put in like a wire cage from a chicken wire, folded it closed so they couldn't get at it, and put them down, covered them, and that's it. Yep. There's a close-up in the next one. Yeah, that's the close-up of what I do. I don't put them upright or anything. I just put them in there and let them grow. And they're growing very good. Oh, good. I'll put them up uh, fix next week so you can see how, how they grow in there. And that's the same again, the tunnel. This is a delivery from uh, the council, that's compost, but I call it crappy compost because it's not really composted. It's all green material that the council collect. They put it through a wood chipper, then they put it on heaps. And instead of letting it compost down for about six months, they do it in one month, but they put in pipes with steam. They heat it up incredibly fast and it it steams, but it stinks at the same time. It's not like a compost smell, it's like tar. But the only way I use this is as a top dressing, about uh, one inch as top dressing, because it's sterile, nothing grows in it. If you plant through it, underneath, you hit good soil. And if any seeds wave, uh, if any seeds start uh, coming from the next garden, or from uh, weeds that are uh, along the path or something, if they yeah. start sprouting in there, you, put, you pick them up really, really easily. Yep. And that's the way I do it. I just top dress everything with that crappy compost and plant through it. These are the strawberries you can see, and then the next bed's along. Now at every end of the bed, I put pots of daffodils and this is what I asked Nick about, the compost 
I just have big barrels, the water butts of 1200 liters, 1200 liters. I cut out the underside, the front, and the top, and I just chuck everything in there and I leave it. But I always put like cardboard between every layer and said, I'll have a look and see what is done after the year. And it's kind of okay, but I didn't know what was wrong with it because it didn't compost completely down. So the first thing I asked Nick was, what's wrong? And Nick said, aerate it, water it, it'll probably be, be too dry. So, Shit, sorry. Yeah, it's okay. So I uh, turned it over uh, and Mick was right. In the middle was all kind of grayish material, like very light and fluffy and was as dry as a bone. Not one worm in there. So I tore it all up, pulled it all out, put, put it all back in, watered it and left it on the cover now. So we'll see what it does by uh, autumn time. Thanks, Mick. You also sent me this one during the week, so I thought I'd yeah. show the, the troops. I don't know if it works, I just saw it and said, I'll send it to me, see what he makes of it. Yeah. Well, I shall give it a go. I mean, if um, if you don't like use baddies for sprays, then uh, anything but the go. We'll also give that a go and all. But, uh, if you don't get it, it'll be on That's YouTube. Right. You copy it. Jeff? Yeah? You know I'm when you're planting out your... Oh, sorry, I'll make you fun. Uh, Jeffrey mentioned, uh, mentioned me a week ago or summit, and uh, he can't get me book off Amazon they, because of this COVID crap. So I've sent him one in the post. He's a good lad. Thanks, Mike. Jeffrey, thank you very much, sir. Nice little write-up. Well, right, now you can ask him your questions. Colin. Oh, yeah. You know, when you're planting out your cabbage, your brassicas, etc., do you ever use um, uh, little platelets on the base to prevent the fly getting in? No, no. Um, I, no. no, I never do that. I just cover it with either wood chip yeah. or straw. All That's right. it. I, I don't use uh, the cabbage colours. What well, does it, does anyone else use them? What are they calling? I used to use carpets, cut with yeah. cutting. But now I use uh, the straws or mulch, top dressing. There's there's no need for them, as Jeffrey just says. Oh, as, right, as long okay. as you've got some covering that base of the stem, yeah, you can get away with it. All right, cheers. There's only stop. one thing. Nature could could prove us wrong, but so far, mm. no problem. Yeah. Any more questions for Jeffrey? Uh, yeah. Can you hear me, Mick? Yep. yep. Go on, Scott. Hi, Jeff. Hi. When you're planting your onions, I've noticed you've had them in clumps. Was that from seed? Yeah, they're from seed. They're uh, Bedfordshire champions. And then you plant them out in clumps? Yeah. And that's the first... In clumps that, like that. That's the first time I've done it because I saw it on uh, Charles Dowding. So right. he said, if you put them in clumps, no more than four, the onions should uh, give you good bulbs, but they because they grow, they push each other outside. Okay. So they should be okay. And he said, you can try it. So I tried it. If it doesn't okay. work, I'll let you know. Yeah. <laughs> it, okay. it does work. I've done it a few times, but I need all my onions for the exhibition. Ah, uh, yeah. Uh, meaning, if I did it that way, you'd have little dents. Yeah. I'm only small dense. I mean, I'm not, not all right for eating, but for yeah. exhibition. But now, nah, do it. Saves your room as well. But it does work. Yeah. 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 Thanks, Jeff. Cheers, Scott. Cheers. Jeffrey, thank you, sir. Good man. Very welcome. Good on you. Right, next one. This is nice. um, cucumber seedling. Normally, you get one or two white roots on that because it's had mycorrhizal under his feet. That's what it does to it. That's from pricking out. Meaning, there's quite a few people had, had this off me weekly. If anybody wants any, it's a five or a bag. Uh, you get one or two bags for three quid post. But uh, if anybody needs any, just private message. How me. big is it, man? Sorry? How big is it? 
How big's bag? 400 gram. That's an old photo. 360 gram. It's cheap as a fart. You won't get no better or cheaper since I buy bulk. The last in moons. Oh, write me book. If anybody's had it and enjoyed it, just click on the page again. I need me ratings. So I've got the internet okay. connections are uh, playing up again. I've only had two give me a write up on, on me uh, ratings, but the more write ups I get, the more this gets put with with the other compost books because there's a couple of times i've clicked on compost books on amazon and it's not even on the page because i've had nobody click on it and give it any uh i.e any stars or sod all so if you've got five minutes just give us a i'll give a fair i'll give you a, i'll give you a review tomorrow right if this don't give work me. Where's the boogie was it? Zoom, photos, control. Got the bloody right one now, eh? Bear with me, folks. <laughs> Bastard. Get up as a bad job, mate. I throw it through the window. <laughs> Technical term. It's only a bit of fun, Mike. I had this up earlier on. Mm -hmm. I had this page open earlier on. Jesus H. There you go. Click the bottom now. Oh, the video starts. No, that's that's the older bastard. He's bloody trying my patience. Hey, click the arrow on right hand side. That's that's an older. I'm going to go through all this shit again now. <clears throat> Normally I'd uh, I'd have wrapped this in by now. And, uh, not told you all lot to stick it, but uh, I'd have... Uh, it's one of those days. We, we tried this earlier on and uh, I'd got it down below and it worked. But Ben's looked into it, other people doing Zoom, i.e. his mates. And uh, the ones that the, there's a few of them using the wheel, and they am having trouble with it as well. Because it's free, you don't have to pay for it. Uh, we think that's why it's free. Because sometimes it doesn't bloody work, like tonight. Bastard. But I know who's on, I've got all the names, so I'm going to draw two out tomorrow at the ad. And I've got to go through this this way as well. What a pain in the Aris. Nice bit of sun today. What when it was out? Going cold tonight though, isn't it? Yeah. Two degrees. Sun makes all the difference. Can I just, while you're flicking through, can I just ask somebody, perhaps Paul, what's the ideal temperature to grow my chilli plants at now? Because I've I just seen Jeffrey putting his in a, a container to boost them up. Between, oh, tw between 22, 22 and 25, mine are that. Oh, blimey, I'm nowhere near that. I've just got... Mine are lovely, mine in... Oh, uh, oh, 20 oh, 20 degrees. Oh, I ain't anywhere near that. I'm next to the dining room in the buy a fire, so I love them all. I'll bring him inside, I think. <laughs> yeah, no good outside. I'm too cold outside. Oh, right. That's why they're not moving. Where are you probably keep going? Ah. They'll probably kill them. <laughs> right, I'm back with you. 
Right, then balls are out to move from the back guard in the lawn. Because the hound would have eaten and I would have poisoned the little chap or wench. I move the bulbs and uh, some are put in the front garden and these are coming through so we got away with that. Right, what are we doing next? Brassicas. These need potting on. Next pot size up are these uh, red plastic cups. We'll cover doing these poundland but these are superb, I love these. And uh, I've got a little uh, soldering iron there, and that's how I put my holes in. Obviously, I do it outside, so I've got power up there. Because of the fumes of the plastic, that's why I do it outside. Well, they put two lovely little neat holes. So from the pots on the left, which I'm using, I'm just jumping up about an inch or something. But uh, nice-wise, roots tell you it's a decent plant. I'm going to throw a bit of mic under his backside and get him going. I'm holding the chap upright and the two seed leaves which are on the bottom I'm holding them up as well when I firm him in meaning I ain't gonna damage those seed leaves I still want them there so we carry on sprouts next and then they took outside and waited right that one there this was the Queen's uh, Diamond Jubilee 1953 this is it in White Heath, Petersfield Drive, where my grandfather lived. There's me and our kid on the bottom. I've still got that berry. <laughs> which one's which? God knows. Which one's which, Mick? I don't bloody know. You have the one on the right? You have the ugly one, are you? Twins, <laughs> <laughs> Twins are identical. <laughs> in 50, yeah, identical. Uh -huh. Right, these canes need uh, renewing. Oh, like right. these canes need re extending and getting to the top of me, Blanche. So I got a new one in there, so he's got now two hoops on him. And before there was two hoops, but I ain't got the height on him. So now I'm lifting those flags up, all the leaves, which makes the middle look for light and get on that. Still no collars on yet. Don't need them. Right, go back on that one. Also, now with the canes, I've got that leaf, or that leak, I should say, looking right. I'm looking right in the middle on it. The leaves are coming off straight on the inside. Now that cane's a bit off skew, meaning it ain't right behind him. That cane is. And that's how I want him. Was he, he would grow nice and straight and them leaves that come off and go either side of that does that make sense what I've just said probably too much crap for you Olaf but uh, yeah that's what I do so you can't see the cane behind it because he's right behind never with it right our uh, goat herd has been down again he's a good lad this is beautiful stuff this is and uh, the other side chicken muck I think this is the second lot of uh, chicken muck we've had now. Right, this was little last week. There's loads of gladdies in. If you know, uh, if you haven't grown gladdies yet, just have a go. Because uh, if this is still going, I'll still get you to put all your gladdies on. While I was there, I'll get me uh, my sticks, my French sticks. Bit of beef. Put some crisps in, smash them all up. Mmm, beautiful. Look at that photo. Mm -hmm. That's Boston, isn't it? Eh? <laughs> that is nature at its best. When I looked at that, I thought somebody had painted that on us. But then I saw the outline of the owl. That is bl brilliant camouflage, isn't it? Superb. Yeah, that's good. Right, Miss Spray, foliar feed. This is when the sun goes off, obviously. And this one is charged. Beetle dung any brew they get right compost ingredients that one there is my wood chip and if you keep the wood chip moist as i do that has probably been in a month that is how quick it breaks down that is why if you remember last week them piles of wood chip at the bottom of our plot that chap's been nicking it all and top dressing his uh, bed all his beds in fact all his bloody allotment and this is why he does it because if that breaks down after a couple of weeks in a bag, 
but it's going to break down outside it. Anyway, that's why he does it. And this is Jerry from last week. This is the photo I should have put on before he, he did his spiel, introducing him. And I forgot to put the photo in because I was rushing around like a blue house again. Good picture of me. That's a good picture, Mick. Yeah. You're, you're, you're a yeah, good like looking person, one. actually. Thank you for that, Jerry. I wish someone else could say that, Mick, apart from you. <laughs> right. Right, if it is a nice come day. A bit since then. Yeah, but it might get trimmed after the lockdown a little bit. <laughs> If it is a nice <laughs> day and there's no uh, wind or rain, then the house plants get thrown outside and they get rain. Right, glad is. These are my in the mushroom trays in the uh, garage. Cool. I haven't looked at these for a, a couple of weeks. I'm expecting to get a few duffins, but uh, that, that's normal anyway. Right, the ones that haven't got paper on, meaning there's no corms. If there is paper under it, so the little cormorants don't drop through me, uh, me crates, if that makes sense. All marked up. These are me velvet. I call velvet. I ain't sure of the proper name, but there's different sizes, as you can see. Oldens and younguns. But I'm going through these slowly. With some of these that um, have got the old skins on, are exactly the same as my shallots. Just give them a squeeze, and they'll tell you if they're duff. If they am, you'll see it all marked up. Pink with a white inner. Don't know his proper name, but as long as I know it is. Uh, there's a duffin in my hand, obviously. I've, I've squashed him, which probably picked him up like that one. Squashed him, and he, he's gone a bit soft, so he's going straight in the bin. Uh, prims, these was, uh, 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 first year, last year doing the prims. These are the small chaps, Primula. And these were the, the cormorants on of him, so I'm saving them myself. Lady Elena, a beautiful yellow, I loved them. So uh, I'm keeping them myself. Shalimar, that was a beautiful red one as well. So I've got my own little cormorants, babies off in front for uh, to bung in. In fact, then put them in later on. But these lot here, I'd only got one tray with the stems still on, meaning these were the last lot that I put in the tray. So now, them stems will come off clean as a whistle. They, they just snap clean off, obviously, because, it, because I'm dried. So they will get sorted out as well. So I've been there, I've Singular Beauty. Uh, I've sent me made some of these as well. Down south, beautiful Gladdy, Boston Corner. So I've got quite a few cormorants to go in off these lot. I've Singular Beauty, Shalimar, uh, Lady Eleanor, and me velvet. Pot a bung a bit of paper in the bottom, put me compost in. Uh, this is Shalimar. These are the velvet. Uh, I've Singular Beauty, two pots of them going out. In fact, I think there was three in the end, yeah. It's too many to put in two pots. Uh, and then cover them, obviously, put my labels in. That was my last pot I did. And then give them a nice watering. These will go back in the greenhouse, as you can see on the, on the right-hand side. So the greenhouse is now filling up quickly. Look at that. Nigel, ready for DI in. Tesco nice. during the week. Nice. Winter got me spent uh, coffee grounds. We'll come on to that in a bit. Right, there's me watching the box, cutting me, uh, ripping up my loo rolls and my egg, uh, egg boxes. And the hounds helping me out as well, ripping uh, the loo roll up. This is Nigel's um, alpaca muck. He sent me that photo during the week. I told you, anybody's got a, a photo of the mucky or good dollop of muck. So that was Nigel's alpaca muck. Mm, 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 mm. Right, this is Jim from Morgan. Morgan. Uh, he sent me a few photos. They've had uh, vandalism on his site. He sent me these, and uh, he said the the committee uh, ain't well. They ain't bothered about nothing. They they ain't gonna do so at all. I've got money. They want to 
your cameras or so all. You've just sent me photos of the damage first. And I said it looks like kids and that is their fence they've got. I think is that the last one? Yeah. That's the fence they've got so they can easily climb up if but um it, it is open. But uh I've asked the amount of people on the site and how many people are interested. You basically you've got to wait for the AGM, but you've got to have a good working committee. You only need three of you. And and just take over the job. That's that's what I did with the, the chamber's job on the on our side, I've been chairman ever since, just to sort them out, and now we've got a good committee. So I've told him if you can get another two people interested to take on the committee's job, just, just sod the others off, get rid of them, because they're not doing the job. And just get everybody to turn up at the AGM to outvote them. And that, that's what I did, and that's what you got to do. And then they've got the money, but they won't spend so long, so see what happens there. Right, a couple of bottles of wine I've got to sort out. This is Spud and Raspberry. Uh, it was you to have a perv. The Raspberry wore too clear. They looked a bit cloudy. Well, it was. Once I've cleaned all the outside dust off the off the dimmy jars, all too bad. That was me or the one that spoiled it. That's a cloudy as a ferret. But the, <coughs> the Raspberry one, I put me Mark felt pens on there she marked him and I'll leave it for an hour and I'll just see if he's still bubbling which he was meaning if I do bottle him up I mean it was clear enough to bottle but if I do bottle him I've got a chance that he's still brewing away and he's gonna blow the cork so I'm gonna give him a, another a couple of weeks then have a look again and see if he stopped bubbling right taking the hound for a, a walk look at these leaves Loads of leaves still about. So when we took them back home again, dropped the missus off on the arm, and I come back out again and collected some leaves. I then got some goat muck. This is the goat muck. It is full of worms. Tiger worms, brandling worms, compost worms. Remember the worms you want for your compost. Fish building bone, this was down the trading shed Saturday. This is last Saturday. And uh, from our talk last week, Top dress all your fruit trees. So I got that while I was down there. So my top orchard, my trees up there, he was gonna have a, a dollop of fish wood and bone. Fish will round each plant, which they did there. And then we legged it down the working our way down with raspberries which were there. And I've got a blueberry there. Strawberries halfway down the plot. These are uh, needy weeding, but uh, we'll come back on to that one in a bit. Bottom orchard, I've got a apple tree this side here. No, no there it is. Tunnels here. I've got a grapevine, which you, no, you can see the bottom of the grape coming up there. So the grapevine goes across there. Then I've got a, a black blackberry there, apple tree, and then fruit trees here again. And then there's all blueberries in pots. Well, those leaves I bought down, I've got these all to cop or not. There's my compost. I've got to empty a empty bin to, to put that leaf mold in. So I've emptied the bin of my compost. Uh, straw on the bottom to stop me worms dropping through the chicken wire. I've put leaves and then a bit of goat muck. This is going to break this down beautifully, keep it nice and moist, watery. I'm using liquid osmuk, but you can use comfrey, nettle juice, fiddle on it, or just wet it. As long as you wet every leaf that goes in, it's going to break down. I've got one that's ready there, so I'm going to nick all them worms that are in between my two bits of carpet. And then pick them up and empty them in, into there. So I've added me worms. You, you get the be worms there anyway with the goat muck. The two bits of carpet I put on top, then I water them too as well. Put the lid back on. Right, this is the back end of my tunnel. I've got two grapevines obviously planted outside going underneath. There's one come up there and there's one come up this side. So I've fed them as well, fish, blood and bone. Uh, 
I took this photo a bit further out, but you can all see them very well. But they are there. And this is that packet of mixed foxglove seed I'm from Jeffrey. There's about seven of us had them, I've dished them out. I've just sprinkled them all at the top of my plot on the bank. Right, Rock Dusty, if you remember we had that talk, um, was it a week before last, of Jennifer from Reeming. Then uh, somebody was asking questions at the end, and uh, somebody says, have you used it as a foliar feed, or as for sowing seed, very fine. So I thought, well, I've got to give it to Google, because I like my foliar feeding anyway. Uh, so I'm getting this down to a fine powder. I've even done that again and got rid of them lumps. And I'm going to try that during the week as a foliar feed. And with mixing in with me uh, first compost. Like if, if I'm pricking out a seedling, that, that compost there will, will have um, some dust. It is it is dust, so it's going to break down quicker. That's the longest stuff, obviously. Right, this was um, Saturday morning. My llama and my alpaca woman. I get her a ring. She says, any chance of coming up? I've run out. She says, yes. So I went up Saturday morning. And there's my mates. They don't come that close normally. I need a bloody haircut. That was probably poor see. That's why they come that close. I caught him having a piddle. Dirty boy. So there's big lumps and little lumps. Why is that? I don't know. I, I asked them. Right back in my greenhouse, if I remember me sweet tears I put in, I thought, bloody hell, i got a shoot off him. No, I haven't. What shoot's that? He's a gladioli, eh? He's a cormlet. So my sweet tears I ain't come through yet. I thought it's a bit early. And in the, of course, uh, I thought I took another photo here. There was um, pot leaks in as well, and they've got cormlets coming through. If you remember last year, I, I took my cormlets out and the compost I used again. And that's that's where the little chaps are coming through. Spuds. The biggest of the lot is getting planted out. So I collected some more goat muck again. Obviously this is down the plot. We had another delivery of wood chip. Good man. Obviously work's picking up again. And uh, Luke, who's, who's uh, one of our noons down the plot, he did have this little chap sat in his bench to scare all the, the thrike shots, but now he, he stuck him up. And he, he's got cameras up and all, he's a good lad. And there's uh, some ragworts asking him why he's doing things. Because <laughs> he's got bloody common sense here. Jesus, what? Right, this lot here, I'm going to drag up here because these are going to get planted out down there. So I'll drag that up. Give them to the end. Pull the weeds, suppress them back. <coughs> Go down. And this is me, Pedro, uh, Kyle. Keith sent me this. Good lad. Bit of muck under his Harris and on the sides. Bit of mic under him for good measure. Then I'm going to plant him out. Exactly the same again, I'm going to earth him, or not earth him up, but I'm going to pack him together from the outside. I'm only pushing him down slightly. I don't want to disturb the roots that much or anything. So we bunged him out. Also, one of my um, uh, runner beans, exactly the same again. Bit of muck under him. Well, I'm in Kate Decadent and I bunged him out as well. Somebody's got the news on, can you mute? So, so I bugged him out as well. My tater's going in, because he's ready to go out. Exactly the same again, bit of muck under him. Nice white roots, that's one of the seed that tells you you've got a healthy plant. Surround him with muck, firm him in, then give him a good way to it. I can't put the cover back, so I will uh, sort them out in a bit. Right, this is me at uh, bottom orchard. It's about this time of year where <coughs> blueberries, especially, they like a bit of uh, spent coffee grounds on them. Picks them up, get, get some gooing. 
So luckily, uh, as we was at Tesco, Stick. buying some of it, I thought, while I'm here, and that's why I got it off the wenches. <laughs> so all me, I think I got seven all together in pots. And there's one up there, near to the top of the plot as well. He had some spent coffee grounds on him. Right, now I've mulched this lot, now it'll get a good watering. Which the lot does. Meaning that's going to keep the moisture in, stop it drying out, hopefully, and look after it a bit better. So I'll keep my eye on them. Right, one of my bags has got a hole in, so I've mulched that up straw. Instead of throwing the bag away because it's no good for manure or anything, it would now be good for straw. Because the, it, it ain't going to drop out there. If it, as if it was muck, so I'm still going to use the bag. Right, these are what are still in the cold end of the greenhouse, and uh, my niece got hold of us, and they said, it was her, her mate, Caroline, who used to have a, a plot on our site, and I have to give it up. I, I was interested, it was a good gardener, but I uh, had the, the dreaded sea, and had cancer. Then, then they said, oh, you're clear, and all this crap, what a load. I've bloody got it again. And he's got so long to live. Meaning he's got raised beds at the back of the garden. And uh, Sarah says, any chance has he got any spare veg? So these lots I looked at, and I'm going to get a tray of uh, red onions. So I'll put the best ones, all the ones near of all the same size, in that tray ready for her. Them lot will catch up. So that's them I've got for her. Uh, it's good back on them two. Um, Andrew, while you're watching, and yo, Paul, I've got a half a dozen exhibition shallots and half a dozen picklers for you for our show if you're interested for Colin's collection. Up to you. Well, you can have them anyway, do what you want with. Ah, some pickles. Go on then. So, that big tater Go there, on, he is going in one of my bags. I've got one of these um, grow bags. Well, it might be a council bag. What's the difference? Bit of straw under his iris, then some goat muck. Then I'll pick him up before he gets too heavy. This is the back of the house where it gets very little sun. But uh, there's a barbecue, and the steps are made to go through the porch. But there's nothing ever down here. Ideal place to put my tater. So I've got all my different bits and pieces. Bunged him in. I've surrounded him with muck as well, and a bit of mic under his iris. And as I'm not earthing muck, but I'm earthing him up with muck and my compost. Oh. So I'm just holding these leaves up as we're going along, and slowly I'm filling them up. So these are them, them uh, bag. I think there's two two bags of my compost, which I had to empty the bin to get them the leaf moulded, which worked out well. For this tater, like normally people have put three taters in a bag of side, three or four taters in a bag of side, but I'm just buggy one in. So my compost as well, obviously the worms are staying in there because I want them in there. Nearly to the top, then get a good waiting. That label I had to move it, the bloody dog come out and nicked it. So I took it off and I put it in the bag. <laughs> bloody hound. Right, strawberries. These need weed. I've got a bit of weeds coming through, crust, but well, I'll talk you through it anyway. Nice dry day. So, me in between the two uh, hoops, I've got pegs. These pegs were from Wilco, 10 pegs, but they hold them down. I'm just there. There's a peg there and in the middle of every hoop. So, I'm getting them up. At the top of it, where I've got me bamboo canes going across the top. I've put them uh, hoops upright and then I put tape on them, electrical tape. And that holds these nice and sturdy. I've then got thick wire that goes up and then when I fold the side of the netting up, that goes in between there and holds the netting up. As we can see there. And it works. So I've got the right hand side held up and I'm going to do this side first and then leg it through the others. What am I doing then? If you remember a couple of weeks ago, I, I did me um, hanging basket of strawberry. I, I trimmed that, got all the dead stuff off. 
and he has now started spurting exactly the same as these on here. New growth coming through. This was last year's uh, rabbit mug. So the old stuff is going to get cut off with scissors, obviously keeping away from the new growth. But just basically looking after them, getting ready for the growing season. So I've cut all the crap off, then we're going to compost it. Done one side, now going down to the side. If I see a little ladybird, which this, uh, the last week, I must have moved about eight on them. And uh, five of my ball back to the greenhouse. But if I see one on his tod, I'll just transfer him onto one of the plants. But uh, now is the time I'm starting waking up. There's a see quite a few of the chaps. Right, that's that lot done there. The blue ticks, blue tits are active in the box. But uh, could I get a photo? That's the closest I'll get a photo of him. Because when I was lying on the ground, it could see my feet sticking out. You thought I bloody soft? I coming here? Obviously, I wanted a photo of him in there, so I will have to wait till next week. Right, potting on again, back in the brassicas, back in the greenhouse. I saw one of my little chaps, uh, in fact, is that one there? Look, looking at him, that's why I pick every plant up, because of course the aphids, the aphids are south. They're going to stay out of direct sunlight, which is underneath the bloody plant. And that's where I saw these. And I saw him outside, so I brought him in and fed him. He's like a pork pie now, he's twice the size. But he does his job. Uh, blueberry, outside in the tub, I'll get him a good um, dollop of uh, spent coffee grounds as well. And this is Roly's muck. Roll, I'm in there, Roly, where am you? Roland? Yes, I'm here, Mitch, yeah. Good man. Right, yeah, basically, the, 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 on, basically the heap on the left. Yeah. Um, the, the heap on the left. I've got a nephew uh, on the farm with his own little business, and the in the next village they have to get they have to dispose of the horse buck. So Henry was dropping me off a load, uh, one load a month, as he was doing it. So there's about oh, I don't know, eight or nine, probably probably twelve months muck there. And I always leave it till it's about 12 months old yeah. uh, before anything, before I do anything. Um, but because you said about getting the pictures, I've done that. And the one on the right is I just scratched the top off to try to get a picture showing there's a few worms in it. Brilliant. So um, that's sort yeah. of the history of, of that mucky. But when, when I use it, what I tend to do is I've got a four uh, section mucky, I suppose. And I put wood chip in the bottom, and then a layer of this, layer of grass, layer of um, ch kitchen waste, some more muck, and just lasagna, what, um, build yeah. it up. When that one's filled, yes. it just tips into number two, and I start again. And that's how I do it, you know. Yeah. So it's like yeah. composted twice, really. Yeah. Good brew. That's it. If, if, yeah, that you keep it moist, and got your worms. Excellent. Oh, there's loads and loads of worms, but yeah. the, my next thought, of course, now that I'm heavily into this biochar, is to add biochar into the compost heap as I do it, like, you know. Yeah. To um, just sort of spread that around a bit more. As you have mentioned that, that would be a, a good talk for us, lot. Biochar. You reckon you can get a, a few uh, photos together? Yeah. Do us a little uh, intro. I, I, can, I can put... I could put a few bits and pieces together yeah. because how, how I started doing the biochar and how I do it now, and I've made like the 45 gallon barrel burners to be able to do the biochar. So um, I'm doing it a, a different way to originally because uh, the first time they flood the uh, biochar to put the fire out because that's where the problem is. And then the trouble is, You've got to wait so bloody long for it to dry out before you can crush it down or put it through a shredder. Oh. So the latest way of doing it is I actually suffocate the fire. You'll be a leading fireman. So I suffocate the fire now by a barrel with a clamp lid and drop yeah. the back because the hole's obviously in the bottom of the barrel. So I drop that down into wet sand, 
clamp a lid on it and then it actually suffocates the fire and puts it out. Of course, then it's dry. I can put it straight through the shredder, <laughs> can't I? It gets a bit dusty at times. Uh, but, um, uh, you know what I mean? Rather than saturating it with water and then try and dry it before you can break it down any sense, yeah. because it's dry, yeah. it cuts the middleman out like, you know? Mm. But, uh, yeah, I could put some bits of pieces together in how I do the biochar. You yeah. know, there's lots of perfectionist scientists out here on Facebook that think they know better than anybody else. Mm. Um, but I do it how I can do it, you know, and then inoculate it with um, the wormery, because I've got a wormery as well, <laughs> but I put the spent compost in and the food waste in, um, so I don't put no cardboard or bits and pieces like that in my wormery. It's purely spent compost that goes in there. Kitchen waste, uh, I have added at uh, one time some coffee in there. Um, oh, what the other stuff? Rock dust goes in there. Um, yeah. Stir it up and that's what I then use. Two, two litres, how oh, oh, I mixed it, two litres of the biochar, two litres of the wormery, a couple of three litres of water, uh, a litre of um, sugar beet nuts in there to put the molasses in there, stir it all up, give it two or three days, and then mix it with the ordinary compost. You know, right or wrong, that's how I do it. Brilliant. I mean, biochar has been around for bloody moons. You know, it's been yeah. around for centuries. It, 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 would, would the bridge some money just getting into it? I looked to into I, this I, um, carbon gold. They got me into it. But I yeah. wish I had the time to do it. It, it, it is very time it. consuming. It's, it's nature and, 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 and it's working with nature. You've got, more. You, you've got to get the wood to make it from in the first place. Yeah. Um, and what I, what I do is I get an awful lot of pallet wood that is single-use pallets that haven't been um, sprayed and chemical done. This goes to a printing works in actual fact. So they're single-use pallets that is all clean wood. So, yeah. you know, putting that nasty chemicals in there when I'm making it. You know? oh. But it's just, you know, old Pete's never too much time on his hands. <laughs> Brilliant. Roll it, cheers for that. it together and get it over to you, mate. Ox Excellent. Thank you, sir. No problems. Right, while well, we're still on that photo there with the words, I've had um, a few questions during the week, obviously about worms or whatever. Were Jeffrey with his composting as well, which I worked out at the end, it was too dry. You've you got to keep it moist. Worms breathe through the skin, meaning that they've got to stay moist you know, to be able to breathe. So if they start drying out, they're going to clear off. They're going to go deeper, looking for moisture. That is in the normal land and, and in the compost heap. If they're on your lawn and your lawn dries out, they're going to leg it down. If you have a good downpour, then you get worm casts at the top. That, that's what's happened. Worms can feel the vibration of the rain and they're coming up for moisture and they're looking for dead leaves, stuff like this to drag down. If you keep them moist, or if we had rain every day for uh, whatever, the worms would be on the top. That'd be an ideal. Exactly the same as a compost heap and everything. Look after your worms and they will stay there and multiply rapidly. You've given them the food in the heap. And uh, Nick uh, Bra uh, Braker, he, when he did his first talk on the um, onions, his heavy onions, he was on about his raised beds in his tunnel. He said he's got to go to Charles down and ask him about his uh, compost and that. Nick, what he didn't realise is uh, he uses hot compost, meaning he doesn't get any worms. It's too hot for him. He gets his compost, but it, it, there's no worms in it. That's why I use worms to compost. I want worms to do my digging. So you still get compost, but it, I know Nick, if, you, if you're top dressing your, your, your raised beds any, anywhere, I know you want worms in with it. So it's with muck on. There's your worms. Just keep it moist, get a good soaking and cover it with the weed suppressors. And nature will get gooey by the time you get your bed done. Right, that's that one in the worms. Uh, I think that 
Oh, uh, Warren Joel. Anybody who goes up to Warren Joel, Black Country, we're closed off. Us yep. muckers, i.e., muck collectors. No third parties in whatsoever. And this is not the COVID. This is. They've got somebody collecting the muck. The muck them getting now is going uh, away oh. straight away. Meaning they don't lead us lot in collecting muck. So we've lost. Oh, them. man. Paul, but you're now uh, one of the winches, don't you? Yeah. Who's got um, a live Down long back in Clint. Oh. So, I think we yeah, got no we got a job here. But I know there's, there's quite definitely... a few around here. Because that Sid me slides and whatever. Use that muck, muck in. And uh, that's it, people. Oh, Mick. Hope you've enjoyed it. Mick. I'm just getting rid of me. Look what will come today. Oh, you, got a, you got a mucky book. Good lad. They come Be today. They won't, they won't do it for Friday. Oh. oh. Hello. So I can beat that. I've had two deliveries. Two? <laughs> I've had yeah, ten, come, ten come today. 